I dislike when people say things like, your baby is so stinking cute. Why do cute things have to stink? Good question. I wore full length pajamas in bed for the first time ever. And Sarah, it was a total revelation. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I'm now the person who shops for sweaters and rain booties for dogs and I do it for fun. Hey, it happens. Such a joy to wake up with existential dread. Someone save us from ourselves and thank you in advance. Have such a good day. Welcome to have such a good day. Yo, yo, what's the word, everybody? Oh, yeah. What's the word, <laughs> little bird? Or Hey, man, you know, this <laughs> is the show where we examine cool, funny, and disturbing things from our lives because our lives can be very disturbing, let me tell you. And, and we hope somehow, collectively, it turns into entertainment for all of us. Exactly. Um, you know, and you're just kind of hanging out with your little lady friends, Heather and Sarah. That's really all it is. We just... are pretty little. You're <laughs> taller than I am, but we're both small people. And we're probably shrinking as we speak. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, I haven't checked my height lately. You know, I've always been the height that I am, which is a, uh -huh. I'm a tiny person. But yeah. I remember when my grandma started shrinking yeah, because she used to be like my height. And then, I mean, mm -hmm. I think by the time she died, she was also 99 years old, but mm -hmm. she was well into the fours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, it just, everything just started to, I think your bones just start to You do. And you, you know, I have a friend who's younger than I am who has said she's already lost an inch. Like she no seriously kidding. used to be five, six and now she's five, five. And she's like, Where, what happened? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so it depends on your age. I think it depends on the person sure. when you start shrinking. Yeah. But shrinking is a part of life, everybody. So just jump on the bandwagon while you can. See? See everything that you're learning already? <laughs> World out there? We're all going to shrink. Although we I think are. our noses and our ears will continue to get bigger. Oh, yeah. Like the, the earlobes. Oof, man. Yeah. Yeah. Old person earlobes. Gotta yeah. love them. I think they're, they're more so than cute. women, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's a good thing they're cute because I, I, I don't like it. I don't like. Well, I'm not like going to like it on future. myself, but I like it on like older men that I think are cute. Not like sexy, but like, you know, well, cute, cute little old man. Yeah. It's, cute like, little it's, like, it's like how old is a, is a man before he's not sexy to you anymore, Heather? <laughs> like your answer will determine a lot. No, this is actually <laughs> funny you bring this up because my sister. So my sister's here visiting and we watch a lot of movies. And she, there's all these actors, well, not a lot, just like a handful that she's like, all these years has said, you guys would have been so good together. And it's this mm. little inside joke between us. It's been going on forever. One of those is Michael Douglas. And I'm a, I was a big fan of Michael Douglas, more like in the seventies kind of thing. Very okay. sexy guy. Yeah. You know, now not so much, but like, I do really love him. Um, so much from like, like the past that I still find him to be like a sexy old man. Like streets of San Francisco era type stuff? Kind of, yeah. Like yeah. fatal attraction, basic oh, okay. instinct That's a little kind of yeah. thing. I mean, listen, he's had a storied career. Coma, which I saw the other night, which was actually really good. A Michael Crichton movie. Hmm. Ooh, I don't he know was if very I've seen cute it. in that. Yeah, it's good. It's like a very subtle thriller. It's good. It's like not, it won't like scare scare you. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Put you in a coma if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like it's like me when I start a movie too late. It's like, how was it, Sarah? I don't know. I was in a coma for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, your your couch is just too comfortable. I think that's one of the problems. It really is. It's a comfy couch, although I now share it because I don't really sit on my couch during the day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at my little work table or I'm in mm -hmm. my studio where I am now most of the time. I mean, weekends are a little bit different, but I'm not like chilling on the couch in the mornings. Mm -hmm. You know, that's too lazy does for me. that? Uh, well, <laughs> some, too people, lazy. some yeah. people work from the... Anyway, it's it's just not my setup. My couch is like for... I'm done with work for the day and now exactly. I'm going to relax for a while, you know, and mm -hmm. read or watch TV or whatever. But it's a good that's policy. also, it's also Otis gets to share that time with me. The rule is that during the day, he's got a dog bed on the floor in the corner. It's a very mm -hmm. nice dog bed. He's perfectly comfortable there. And then he doesn't get up on the couch until I'm there. And so then... he can get on the couch now. Cause I think back in the day yeah. he wasn't allowed. Oh yeah. We, we, we lost that fight. <laughs> I think I let him on once when I think he was like, he was kind of under the weather and I felt bad. 
Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that. Because once you yeah. do it, they're like, oh, no, this is awesome. Well, you, know? And I, you know, I put down his too. like special blanket and, you know, yeah. try to keep try to keep the, you know, I don't know, dog hair to a minimum. But, uh, <laughs> you know, also a fight that I lose. But yeah, that's what we do. It's a good couch. It's a hand me down. Wait, what happened to your other one that you had in Venice? Um, it wouldn't fit into my next apartment up the stairs. Wait, I remember so that. I, I, I still have the chaise part of it. In fact, Otis is on it now. It's in the garage. I see. Um, well, you know, my studio, which is in a garage. But uh, the rest of it left my life. And it <laughs> really sucks because that was world's best couch. That was a good one. And it was not that old. No, it wasn't. Um, and it was, I mean, it wasn't like super expensive, but I put some... Yeah, I put some money into it because I was like, I want world's best couch because it was it was nice and deep and comfy and was going to last forever. The things that you have to let go of when you move, the things that, you know, become trash or get lost. Like when I moved up here, the saddest thing. So Elijah, my boyfriend, is an artist and he's a, he draws. He draws like portraits and he's a very talented artist. I mean, seriously, really good. And he had an entire box of like 50 leather bound drawing books with a lifetime of drawings. And they just disappeared when we moved. Oh no. We have no idea where they are. Everything else made it, seemed to make it. And like, why did that? Like, why couldn't like a box of, you know, silverware go missing or you sure. know, something less meaningful? They could turn up. I know. We keep I'm thinking I'm sure you've that. looked really hard. Yeah. But yeah, there have definitely been things that I was sure were gone forever, mm -hmm. not the same as like cherished childhood, you know, illustrations. No. <laughs> Hopefully they turn up. You know, we as humans are often wrong, Sarah. Tell me about it. So how's your week been? Week has been okay. You know, it's been, it's been a week since you and I hung out. Mm -hmm. And last week I felt... Um, you know, I was kind of kind of emotional about everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we went through an election, and and I won't get too into you know that because I know I talked about it a lot last week. By the way, our friend Prager, uh, who listens to the show, was like, "Sarah, it was funny. I was listening to you talk about how you were crying your eyes out while I was like exercising, <laughs> because that's just the podcast that I had on." And I was like, "Well, I hope that was super motivating for you." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he still listened. Yeah, he's a supporter. Oh, what up, Briggs? That's awesome. But uh, so anyway, so the you know things things have changed somewhat from you know me thinking, okay, well we got through that whole nonsense. You yeah, know, everything is going to be fine now. Clearly, a lot of work to do. Yeah, uh huh. A lot of things to <laughs> figure out and fix, and we all know that. However you lean, we're going to be dealing with some BS for a while. And I'm going to mention a person who may or may not be listening so i'm just going to be very vague about who this person is mm. person i hope you don't mind that i'm telling the story but no one will know it's you so here we go uh, <laughs> we happen to not agree politically about a lot of really important things things that are important to me mm -hmm. and when and i knew this i knew this and after uh well it was actually election night uh, we were talking and, you know, I was sort of doing my thing on one side of the spectrum and person, <laughs> we're just going to call you person, that's your name, was, had, had different feelings. And in my mm. mind was being a little flippant about stuff that I was like, no, this is a really big deal, mm -hmm. you know? And of course I'm sitting alone spiraling myself mm -hmm. and you know, obsessively watching cable news, which I never do, you know, and just get getting so much stuff, you know, fed into me. And uh, we kind of had a falling out about it. It went sort of from like chatting to m me getting frustrated to person getting really frustrated with me. And finally person saying, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Interesting. And I was like, wow, okay, this is kind of... And this was all via, like, text or something? It was all text at the time. I mean, we've talked in person, but yeah. this was a... Yeah, it was a text conversation that, you know, spanned mm -hmm. a couple of days. And I was like, wow, you know, I don't know if that's ever happened to me before. I am sure there are people who have been annoyed with something. Well, I mean, let's keep it to politics, but, like, sure. I'm sure I've said something online where someone's like, yeah, cut her off. Because yeah. I've done that to other people where I'm like, yeah, I don't need to... I don't like this stuff that you're spewing. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's it's not my jam. I'm going to cut yeah. you off. But we didn't have a conversation about it. 
Yeah. It's just, it's you know, people kind of go away. <laughs> they ghost or whatever. Yeah. Or, or, you, or you maybe have a memory and you look them up later and like they've unfriended you and you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. we didn't have anything in common anyway. You know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, totally. But it was the first time that someone was like, you're wrong and you're shitty and I don't want to talk to you anymore. And I was kind wow. of like, I'm not really offended because I don't feel that I did anything bad. Mm -hmm. But I hate it when someone's upset with me. Of course. Because we had a lot to talk about besides this. Yeah. You know, like there's like a friendship that could have been salvaged, but mm -hmm. emotionally neither of us could get there or get back yeah. there because something like monumental happened. And it's weird. It's a, it's a strange thing. And I even reached out again and was like, hey, I've been thinking about this. Like, I just wanted to like, make myself clear in like a few of these, you know, I tried to be really nice about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't expect to hear back again because it, it, it seemed very final, but, mm -hmm. uh, this will, this is the kind of, it's kind of collateral damage, you know? Yeah. It, it no, just, it, it kind of happens. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's one of the themes of the year, really. I mean, the divisive family members, friends. I mean, I have heard so many stories, so much fallout. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's never been this extreme. I mean, we've always had extremities, but there's, it, it's like, it doesn't feel as like nuanced anymore. It's like you're either on one extreme end or the other extreme end. And it's just really hard to mesh you know, mm -hmm. such extremes. And yeah, so you're not alone. Uh, I've heard a lot of these stories. But yeah, I mean, maybe that caused a little bit of your, your crying spell too, you know, because that doesn't feel good. Well, this was after that. I mean, that, that was that was purely because there's just been such a big buildup to this, even mm -hmm. though we're not through the woods, we're not out of the woods, mm -hmm. <laughs> through the woods, you know? <laughs> through the to woods. grandmother's, house, grandmother's we house we go. <laughs> <laughs> we are not through the woods, okay? We're just getting into the woods. No, we are not. It's unfortunate that there are certain things where you're just like, all right, we're done here because this is just going to keep coming up and neither of us wants to be upset, so bye. Again, it's like, it's kind of goes back to the premise of our show. Being an adult mm -hmm. is kind of hard and you have to navigate a lot of stuff that like you didn't ever think you had to when you were a young person and you were naive and it's hard. It's hard to... You know, we're all like full of our own strong opinions now that we're older and, sure. you know, we have our own life experiences and it's, you know, people drift away. You know, I, I stumbled upon an article today on the Atlantic. I haven't read it yet, but the title is the next decade could be even worse. Oh, cool. And there's like yeah. uh, this woman's face with like globes as, for her eyes and they're like on fire. And I'm just oh, thinking to myself, like, no. I'm not going to think that way. I'm going to be an optimist. I'm going to be a glasses half full kind of person right now. I'm just going to, I have to think that the next, you know, 10 years is going to be wonderful. Cause you know, I mean, seriously, I, I was talking to a friend about this the other day and how you go through life and you change and you age and you kind of mourn like your past selves of some, you know, we talked about this a little bit last week and when you get into your forties, um, you know, a lot of things change and you're kind of looking at the back end of your life a little bit more instead of like the front end, you know? Well, that's morbid, Heather. I know. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't have much time left. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that I, I can't help, but I just, I am an optimist and I have had, you know, the lot, like I would say early forties, it's like some rough topsy-turvy times and then there was 2020 so I have to think there's uh, some serious like sunshine at the end of the tunnel so I'm gonna think that you guys can join me if you want I like that Heather <laughs> I like that uh have you had an optimistic week yeah actually pretty I think so um it's been I've gotten a little busier which is good um we were talking about this pre-show Staying busy, I think, is good for me because I tend to, I think it's tough to manage your time when it's, you have kind of a nebulous schedule, but like I've kind of structured my weeks a little bit more and it's kind of helped me stay focused. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also a student again, so that's kind of a trip. When I signed up for the yoga certification, which I am officially um, on my, my, my way, I think I'm like 3% finished, but it is kind of a trip to be a student again because you know it's been a long time and I kind of had the my impressions of what this course would be like thinking oh I'm going to be on the mat a lot and I'm going to be 
you know, doing the 200 hours and like whatnot, but it's like, oh, that's right. Well, there's textbooks and tests mm. and quizzes and like webinars and interfacing with teachers. And I mean, it's like a real course. And I, I don't know, I guess maybe in my mind, I thought, oh, well, it's remote, you know, so there'll mm -hmm. be less interaction, but you know, there's a lot of Zooms and a lot of studying and I like it. I'm into it. I like, I love learning things. And as we do on have such a good day. And, um, it just, it kind of gives me a little more lust for life because it's, I'm working towards something. I'm, I'm making something happen like slowly, but surely, like I'm moving the needle and, you know, I don't know about you, Sarah, but I, sometimes I get impatient and I want things to come to fruition. <laughs> Uh, quicker, yeah. but then you, you gotta like really take a step back and be like, you know, nothing good, or I don't know, there's some expression, but like, um, things take time, things take time to grow. And I know that if I chip away at this, it will be, you know, something in the long run that will be so worthwhile. And I can already kind of feel a little tinge of that. Absolutely. That's so cool. I know what you mean. I mean, I think a lot of people, it resonates with them, you know, that if you stay busy, it's you, mm -hmm. you're happier as a person. Some people are great loungers. Yeah. I got a neighbor, neighbor Mike, might have mentioned him before. He is a part owner in a cannabis farm mm -hmm. and it's very seasonal. And right now it's over, <laughs> you know, it's harvest is over. So it's not that he doesn't work, but he's kind of chilling, mm -hmm. you know, there's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of chill period for a while. And I saw him the other day and, you know, I kind of jokingly, I'm like, well, you just, what are you doing? And he's like, hanging out, you know, that's the way it goes, you know, you know, doing some biz, but kind of just hanging out. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. If I do that too much, I start getting into my own head way too yeah. much. I'm the same. And way. I start feeling lonely yeah. and, you know, getting jittery and that kind of th yeah. stuff. I think that's why I've always, um, even though it can be stressful, I love the deadline, uh, oriented job. Me too. Well, I mean, all jobs have deadlines, but like working in live television, yeah. for example, where it's like exciting, exciting, exciting. Yep. If you mess up, like you're gonna ruin everything. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, you get through it and you're like, okay, all right, that was good. You know, I did my thing and I did it on time. Yeah, and your relaxation is so much more enjoyable. Like for me, I'm similar to you, Sarah. It's like, if I can't chill on the couch until the end of the day when I've been productive. Like I'm not one that I, I cannot lounge around during the day. Um, it's hard for me. My dad's always like, you should just read a book today. And I'm like, I don't know if I can, like my attention span, I'm not really sure I can sit there and, and read all day, uh, even though yeah. I would love to get lost in a book. But yeah, I, um, I miss, I, you know, I am grappling with the, you know, I, I like being an independent. I've got a lot of projects. I'm involved in a bunch of things that I think are interesting, but you know, sometimes I miss that deadline driven full-time job where I'm always in part of the production process. I'm either in development, production, or post, and you're always busy. And you know, but you for can better kind of or think worse. about your yoga course that way, exactly. right? It's like you have deadlines. Yep. Like if you don't do it right, the teacher's going to be like, "You're not up for this." Yeah. So you want to like impress people and be good at yep. it. I have to and create it, you milestones know, it's for myself. I have to like put stuff in the calendar though, because the thing is, is they don't make my schedule. Like you make your own. So like, I have mm -hmm. to really be like, okay, by end of January, I want to be with it. It'll help me. Cause I, I know myself, if I have a deadline, it puts that fire under me. Um, oh, and yeah. I, d I don't want to disappoint myself, you know? Sure. Yeah, I know. It's probably aging us a lot. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've been, I've been doing this since I don't even really remember like what I did for high school coursework. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember my classes, but I don't specifically remember too much about mm -hmm. high school, but I remember a lot about college. Sure. And, you know, there were sometimes like long term, because my, my course was, it was broadcasting. It was very vocational, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of hands on stuff, you know, not a whole lot of like term papers. Yeah. And, but there were, you know, projects that it would be like, okay, you have, you know, like, the whole trimester to like come up with something as you, and you learn along the way mm -hmm. and then you like have this big project at the end. Yep. And I mean, I was just the queen of being like, ah, yeah, I have so much time still. Yeah, so oh, much totally, time me still. too. You know, and then I cram and I'm crying. It's the worst thing. <laughs> and I come out with something pretty good. Well, you're under pressure. But I'm like, 
But I'm like, yeah, like I like so much adrenaline was wasted yeah. just because of time management. Oh, 100%. That's all it was. I'm the same yeah. way. Like if I have, I'm, I do my best work probably at the last minute, like right before the deadline. Yeah. Under the gun. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking about lounging around and I, uh, I mentioned I, I'm not a big TV in bed person. I used to be. And I was thinking about this and I was like, why, why did I change my mind? And I think that when, I mean, when we were like young, young, like living with our parents, it was like, mm. just like super cool to have a TV in your room because like other kids would be like, oh my God, you have a TV in your room. Wow. And, um, I think I had like a black and white TV in my room where it was like from like, you know, the first TV I had, you know, that my parents had when I was alive and they eventually gave it to me. But when you get into like, you know, college age and afterwards and you're probably living with roommates for a number of years. I always did because it's like, that's where you can go be alone. And if you want to watch mm -hmm. something, I mean, maybe there's a common area, but I always had a TV in my room and a computer in my room so I could like have my little cocoon if I didn't want to interact, you know? So I got used to that. And then when I lived by myself, it was the same mm -hmm. thing for a while. I was like, oh yeah, you, you know, you got the nice TV in the living room, but you got the little TV in your bedroom if for some reason you want to be in there. Yeah. And then over the years, I was like, yeah, I don't, this seems, I had like some setups where I'm like, where would the TV go? And then I'm like, maybe I just don't need to do this anymore. Now I'm like very, you know, if mm -hmm. I have a bedroom that's separate from my common area, if I did, which I have in the past, it's like, I don't need a TV in there. Bedrooms are for sleeping to me. So in, in and that's not mm -hmm. really the point of this, but because of that, for, you know, forever, it's just sort of been, okay, you got your phone on the nightstand. And I haven't had like an alarm clock for a million years because there's an alarm clock in the phone that works perfectly fine. And that was just the, if I needed to, you know, look at something, see what time it was, set an alarm, et cetera. That was just my sort of everything device. I've always been slightly annoyed because I, my cat's bugging me, you know, and I'm not sure if it's like too early to get up and feed her because I want to, <laughs> I want to set an example or if mm -hmm. I just like have to like get up and pee and I'm like, what time is it anyway? You know, I know it's in the middle of the night. I have to like tap the phone and just look at the time. I don't have to do it for very long, but it's like, that's just what I've done for many years. And I had moved a couple things around in mm -hmm. my apartment because I did this whole cleaning thing um, this week and just like rearrange some things that I had meant to do and I was finally in the mood to do it. And one of them is this Echo Show, which has a screen and it's not just about telling you the time, it does lots of other things, but at night there's a mode to, to you can tell it because it's, you know, it's flashing information and photos and, you know, all sorts of stuff. It's like, like a rotating like digital picture frame plus. But at night, you might not want it to be like doing that. So you can set like between, I don't know, I think I have it between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. It's dark and you can just see it. Basically, it's just a clock. And if you mm -hmm. wake it up, it'll, you know, get bright again. But it's like it wouldn't, you know, be like blaring if it was right by you in bed. And I just never put it by my bed because I'm like, this is so silly. I can like watch TV from bed. Why would I need another screen close to oh, me that's cool. with my setup now? And so it had been in the kitchen for a while. And it's like a cool kitchen yeah. device, but I'm using it less and less for anything food related. And so it was just like this thing I was walking past. Anyway, I moved it to near my bed, like on top of my dresser, kind of facing me. And just a couple of days ago, this is like the dumbest life hack ever. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, waking up and just being like mm, glancing over and it just there being like an illuminated time and not having to like reach for my phone and press and be like uh what's it say you know because it's on like a little screen you know and i don't see well at night anyway it has like been like a game changer i'm like oh my god i should have had an alarm clock by my bed this whole time this is so hilarious i cannot believe you're you're talking about this because it's been a thing for me too where I have nothing in the house that says the time other than on the thermostat, which it's now an hour off because of <laughs> you know, savings too. time. Yeah. And so when I'm in the kitchen and I'm like, oh wait, when are they coming over? Or like, I really have that many guests, but um, you know, like quick time, I don't wanna have to go around the bar and like, yeah, click my phone for the time. I have been eyeing a big digital clock that I just think is so cool. It had a little bit of like a, 
mid-century sort of vibe and i'm like i just want a big honking clock like on my shelf in the living room so i can just know what time just it glance, is because yeah. I, I have nothing i don't wear a watch um but yeah maybe it's like getting older and and just i don't know what it is or maybe it's this weird time warp we're living in um this year <laughs> it's funny i uh, what it. i'm getting if i'm like doing my hair like putting on eye mm-hmm. liner or something in the bathroom i've got this clock that's on the wall of the bathroom because you know I love clocks and Mm -hmm. it has run out of batteries. Now I can get the batteries changed. Not a problem. Just haven't gotten around to doing it because it's just one of those things that you're just like, (laughs) oh, it's just at 145 forever, (laughs) you know? So, so it's like, I had gotten used to the stupidest thing where it's like, I'd be like, oh, what time is it? And if I didn't happen to have my phone on the bathroom counter, I'd walk around the living room and look at the oven, you know, (laughs) or, or I would ask Amazon's assistant, which I do that. And I'm like, this is so dumb. I don't have to keep asking her like 11 times a <laughs> yeah. day what time it is. You know, it's just like yeah. better clock usage. Um, so yeah. this uh, this little guy, the way that my bathroom is, where if I'm in bed, you know, and I'm like, eh, what time is it? I can also see it from the bathroom. You know, if I look out, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's so simple. It's such a simple little yeah. thing that is is clocks for life, man. Yeah, seriously. No, it's actually, it's, it's really cool that you brought that up because um, I've, it's like, maybe it's the whole like pandemic quarantine thing where we're kind of reverting back to select some simpler, more like, like a uh, utilitarian, like lifestyle, yeah. you know? It's funny. I also, and I know that not everybody feels the same way as me, but I am using my phone less and less because I'm out and about less and less. And that was the whole point of it yeah. is like, ah, you got this great thing and it's mobile and yep. you know, it's, you can do everything on it and look at all these apps, blah, blah, blah. When I'm at home, I mean, sure, it's always, it's always nearby, mm-hmm. but like if I'm on my computer, I'm happier. Screen's bigger, I can type mm-hmm. more easily. Um, all of my texting happens on the computer anyway. I don't really need my phone yeah. for that. Well, because I use messages. So, you know, that's an iOS thing. You know, if it was WhatsApp, it would be a little bit different. But um, I just don't, I, I just sometimes I'm like, I don't want to use my phone. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm yeah. gonna to browse Instagram from my computer. The photos are bigger. And I can do yeah. all this, you know, I'm just browsing. And so mm-hmm. that's been a, it's been kind of a funny thing where it's like, phone necessary, yes. Um, yeah. But really, all it's doing is um, robocalling me from people who want me to change my health care. So. I know. You know, it's funny. I, it's been such a part of my daily existence now, these robocalls. And I know you and I talk about this a lot, but it, it's kind of wild, like how much it has changed my days. It's like I get, I feel it's just constant. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's I'll worse get, than like, ever. And I mean, it is, it is that open enrollment thing of health care. And I understand yeah, for that sure. most of mine is yeah, that. it's all of mine is really except one yeah. where they told me that like my Apple online account had been breached and to to press one to you know do not use your computer and I was like you morons God oh yeah and I had one from Turks and Caicos like the the tropical island and it was like you know this Apple purchase was it verified I was like oh shit like credit card fraud or something I didn't find anything but man I mean yeah. and you can't block them anymore because they come from yeah. every time I get one it's from a different number it's it's insanity yeah. Blocking is it like adds to my stress though it's like dude this is out of control there was a um I have a camera that is it's like a Panasonic camera that is not working properly and it's a really nice camera. I want it to work properly. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have I have things I want to do with it, and you know, I effed it up somehow. And the um, the folks at Panasonic have this like video support team, you know. And for mm-hmm. whatever reason, they're based on the East Coast somewhere, probably New York. But for whatever reason, every time they call me, because there's been a lot of kind of back and forth, it comes from a like just like a random number. They've got some call mm-hmm. center thing, you know. And so I'm never picking up. And they don't leave no, me a message half the time because I think no. it's spam and it's not the same number. So they're, they, I can't even put them in my contacts. And like, I have the same problem. And I had gotten a voicemail from, from someone the other day and you could tell he was kind of irked. Like, what are you yeah. like not picking up anymore? Like, we're like, are you good? Like, is the problem fixed? And I was like, what? God, man. Like, because 
Same thing happens to me yeah, all the time. Like with we the don't vet, know. And they're like, we've been trying to call you. And it's like, well, your number comes up different. I can't even put you in my phone because it, it's like it's a different number every time. And I have to call them back. And then I'm in their voice system. I mean, it's why aren't people talking about this more? Like we got to figure out how to solve this. It's like, it's too much. I mean, people are anyway. definitely talking about it. Well, they are. I'm sorry. They're talking about, I just mean like solution to make this stop. Well, like it's just. The telcos are supposed to. And I, every, I would say like one in every 20 robocalls that I get, spam calls, you know, sometimes it's really mm -hmm. a person, but usually it's a robocall. Yeah. At one in 20 will say potential spam, you know, when the call is incoming. Yeah, so I'm of like, course. All right. Well, that's a step in the right direction, but now I just get more calls. And, yeah. you know, that doesn't really stop them from calling me. It just stops me from answering. Exactly. Okay, here's my question for mm -hmm. you. I wonder what the statistics are of people actually picking up and playing along. Oh, I've done that. Oh, really? Where you're like, oh, the, oh yeah. I'm like feeling like, really I've like, right now. I've like, for fun, I've been like, mm, let's chat for a while, you know? <laughs> and let's just see what your tactics are to try to get my, like, yeah. SSN or or mm -hmm. my bank routing number or, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I've done this. I know, I know it's, I shouldn't because all it does is mm -hmm. encourage people to say, well, you know, we got her on the phone for a while. She, we almost had her, you know, like mm -hmm. they don't realize that they'll never have me, <laughs> you know, yeah. the whole point is like to get somebody on the phone and then, you know, you like, you know, you try to, um, socially engineer, you know, your way into, yeah. you know, getting their identity and stealing it. But, uh. I actually did this through email with somebody. I'm mm -hmm. embarrassed to say it was like not that long ago. And it was somebody who <laughs> was, um, who said, you know, I'm, I'm handling the estate of the late Harold Lane, who, you know, died in a car crash. And for whatever reason, the next of kin can't get it. And we've, you know, we've decided that, you know, you're probably related enough to be able to get this money and blah, blah, blah. And there was a whole, Uncle Harold. it was a whole story. Don't have an Uncle Harold. Well, it's sort of like, they're just pinging anyone with last name Lane. Sure. You know? So someone goes totally. like, wow, I have a long lost relative who was really wealthy and I'm getting it. And it's so just like <laughs> eye rolling and you go like, these poor yeah. like old grandmothers who fall for this, no offense to grandmothers, mm -hmm. young people do too. The, mm -hmm. You know, these poor people who fall for this sort of stuff. But I was just like, I'm just curious because the first email was like long and convoluted and like you're too many capital letters, you know, where you're just like this so like not even done well, you know, No, it's but they, bad. they didn't ask for anything. And I was like, I just want to see how long it takes for them to ask for my personal information. So I wrote back mm -hmm. like, sounds good. Send me the money, you know, and then it was like, oh, Sarah, you know, then you get like the follow up. And it's like really yeah. repetitive and you're like, yeah, you already told me that. Yeah, just give me the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just let me know how you're going to send it to me. And then uh, we went back and forth like five times, you know, where every time there would be like paragraphs from this, you know, this person or these mm -hmm. people, whoever. Like once they even repeated themselves, it was the same email again. And I was like, oh, I already got that email. Just let me know when I'm getting all that money. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, they did ask for my personal information, and that's when we severed the relationship. <laughs> I mean, spam is everywhere. I mean, it's even like in my VRBO or like my Airbnb accounts, I'll get, you know, you can tell that it's not a real person, you know, because it'll be like Michael underscore, 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 dot, 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 K or something, you know? Right. Like, and then they, yeah. they're like, hey, like it's a weird message. It just doesn't see, it's like a little bit like, just incoherent and you know they talk about how they want their company to pay and how can you know can you give me your address so we can send you a check in advance and it's just like this really seems fishy yeah but they've gotten and, and that's a why they call them fishing schemes I exactly mean, and and they can be they can be really good at it i mean the mm -hmm. email conversation i'm describing they weren't good at it i mean mm -hmm. it was just like come on guys we, yeah. we're, we're past like this. try harder yeah but but people and really intelligent people can be duped by this stuff. Oh, totally. So that's our PSA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Life hack. Don't engage. Uh, life hack 101. Don't be like me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any other life hacks? I do. Uh, and, I want to throw in the mix. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll be quick with the other two. Now, I don't know when the last time you had top ramen is, Heather. Well, okay. Are we talking? So 
We're talking I, like top ramen. No. The, you know, the Mm-mm. 25 cents a package. We used to eat it as kids um, all the time. But then when I found out how bad it is for you, I started to eat the healthy kind. Got it. Okay. So top ramen is not the healthiest thing for you. I also Mm-mm. used to eat it as a kid. And even, you know, it's just like the easiest thing. And then you eat it right sure. out of like the bowl that you had on the on the stove. It's still a wonderful, magical thing, but like it is. way too much sodium and like MSG and stuff like so that in there. So cheap though. So cheap. So I was at the a store that's not like a full on, full grocery store. I mean, they've got all, all the stuff. It's just a mm-hmm. much smaller version of a grocery store. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, if you want mustard, like there's the one kind. You don't have <laughs> the 10 kinds that Whole Foods has, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But I'm in there a lot because it's really close and their produce is pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, like, ah, I want some like pasta. And I wasn't crazy about like the DiCecco. And it just like, I was like, nothing really looks good to me. And I was like, Top Ramen seems like something like that would be great for like an earthquake kit. You know, like, why don't yeah. I just grab some, right? You know, because mm-hmm. I know how easy it is and I know yeah. that it would taste good. So I like bought some packages. And uh, recently I hadn't gone to the grocery store and I was kind of out of everything. And I was like, but I had a bunch of veggies and I'm like, Ugh, they're going to go bad. You know, I need to eat this stuff. But I didn't just want to eat like a big old bowl of veggies. Mm-hmm. I wanted some starch. So I yeah. was like, oh, I'll just use the top ramen noodles, but I just won't <laughs> use the packet. Yeah, you know, I don't mm-hmm. need that. I can season mm-hmm. my own stuff. Sure. And the, those noodles cook so quickly. That mm-hmm. is like truly the fastest stir fry you can make. <laughs> you know? It's really smart. Not that pasta is like hard hat. to do, but I mean, you save five to 10 minutes this way. Oh yeah, for sure. And they're really good. They're oh, I, really I have good. such fond memories. I, you know what I really love too is the cup of noodles. Those were my favorite. I ate a lot I, of I just those when those. we worked at Tech TV. Oh my God, because they were free. Me too. Oh yeah, they, I think they had them in the um, vending machine or something. But I- No, they were just like free. Oh, really? Yeah, it was saltine crackers, and I would dip them in my cup of noodles, and that <laughs> would be lunch that. a lot. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that. top ramen, if you want to get creative with some top ramen, I mean, use the seasoning if you want to. I just, it's just too much for me. I smell a cooking spinoff show here, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Life have hack such galore. A good meal. And then the last <laughs> one, have such a good meal. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> You know, because who doesn't want yeah. a good meal? Of course. Uh, I know. Hey, and man, you know, the, there's a lot of these little recipes that we could bring. We could make a cookbook. Yeah. Maybe it'll be, be like fun. we could do like a reoccurring segment, you know? I love it. Have such a good meal. So my last my last little life hack, and I'm I'm glad we're talking about this because you mentioned that you wore the long PJs and, uh-huh. and you loved it. I am also a long PJ fan. Oh. The only reason I don't wear them is when it's just too warm and I'm like and I've just you know it's just too much but I like I like being covered I feel like Mm -hmm. I don't know it makes my sheets feel cleaner longer totally you know and it's just so cozy especially this Mm -hmm. time of year and it's so cute and in that vein I think a lot of us like okay I'm not going to wear my like long pajamas to the store you know Mm -hmm. I probably have in my lifetime but like that's not something that I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. But a step up from that is like nice sweats. Doesn't mm-hmm. have, even have to be fancy, but the whole idea of, you know, I would, in the past, I'd be like, okay, if I'm wearing like a t-shirt and sweats and like flip-flops, I feel like someone's going to be like, Ugh, she didn't try very hard, you know? Mm-hmm. But sweats and sweat sets specifically mm-hmm have gotten so good that it's like, there's something about, and I have a couple sweat sets now. Um, uh, Raining Champ is like my favorite sweat set ever. If Mm -hmm. anyone is not familiar with that brand, it's not cheap, but it is so well made and it's just like really, really high quality stuff. But but just having something where it's like matching top and bottom Mm -hmm. already propels you into something where someone's not going to be like, is she wearing sweatpants? It's like, oh, look. You've coordinated. Yeah. Exactly. It's like an outfit Mm -hmm. and it is... I mean, I'm not like always wearing sweatsets out and about, but I, if I did, I would feel mm-hmm. so normal because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's cute. And you can tell that they're supposed to go together. And sometimes there's a pattern, sometimes it's mm-hmm. not. And so I, uh, I think we'd all like to see some pictures, Sarah. I, yeah. I'll do, I'll do a sweat set photo shoot. That would be really fun. Actually. You should do that. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we'll think about it. But <laughs> Sarah's very bashful. But for anybody who's like, yeah, you know, I don't want to be. 
I mean, be as casual as you want around the house. I mean, you should see the things that I wear sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm like, it's cozy. It looks horrible, but it's, you know, cozy and clean. <laughs> uh-huh. But um, but uh, I really think there's something about the matching top and bottom that lets you get away with ultimate comfort and you still feel, you know, stylish, s- kind of stylish. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you on the fancy sweatpants. Like, um, you know, like the joggers that you can actually wear like outside with like some boots and like a, I wear like a crop, like little turtleneck sweater yeah. and it actually looks pretty cute and like not slobby. Um, but yeah, it's all about the, uh, glorifying your sweatpants these days. But yeah, I love the life hacks. Um, I'm curious though, where did the canned chili go in the ramen uh, area? Do you still like your canned chili? I do. Um, okay. It's it's uh, it's Amy's. It's a great, you know, pop the top, throw in a little cheddar, you're good to go. I wouldn't <laughs> put the ramen noodles in the chili. No, you wouldn't want to no, do that. No, that, I mean, it probably wouldn't be bad, but that's not something I've thought to do. Maybe if he'll you're do it really and, and in a pinch, it back. you know, and you're like, you're running from something apocalyptic and you're, you have to make your own fire. And like, I would just shove those ramen noodles in the, the can and just eat it right there. But yeah. you know, <laughs> things aren't that dire yet. I love that. Like the dragon <laughs> is getting near. Okay. Let's quickly eat this ramen <laughs> in the chili. <laughs> I love it. So, um, I, so I have a lot of life hacks. In fact, I have a, a kind of an ongoing uh, Slack thread with some friends that we talk about the things that have kind of got like the, you know, sort of the materialist material things that have gotten us through the pandemic. But one of mine definitely is the long PJs. You know, I'm not really a PJ person. I wear big t-shirts. I wear like little rocker t-shirts. My favorite t-shirt to wear to bed is a Smith's t-shirt. Um, <laughs> it's big on me. It's thick. Um, it's kind of like a boyfriend shirt and I love that. And I just do that with underwear, full disclosure, but, uh, and I'm not going to do a photo shoot of that. So, <laughs> yeah, <Boos. laughs> but I did get a pair of PJs like a while back, long ones and you know, it's cold enough now and it, you're so right. There's something about, I don't know, there's something you feel classy or something. And I feel, no, I mean, it's beyond cozy. It's like, you really feel put together going to bed. So I really have my whole sleep uh, regimen like just totally dialed right now. I've got this awesome PJ set. Um, my other favorite thing ever is a, it's a, it's basically a silk eye mask. And that sounds weird, but it's like a matte silk. So it's like very, it's just really good material. And uh, my friend Morgan actually told me about this company. It was something that like uh, you find on Instagram. It was like, it was like an Instagram ad kind of thing. Um, but they do a lot of, I like, wonder if it's the same one. It might be. I have, I bought three silk eye masks hmm. and I cannot live without them now. Lunya? L-U-N-Y-A? Do they have like, know. they go over your nose, they kind of open up like, and they, they have like a nose opening. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll they're sort of like flat on the top. Yeah. But I mean, I think a lot of eye masks yeah, are maybe just so. that. You know, this one it's... is the absolute bomb. It is, I've had a lot of eye masks. I've worn eye masks forever. And this one just, it just like the other ones, I'm just like, I should just throw them away. This thing is amazing. And I would have to say, um, tube socks. Tube socks are my jam. And and for anybody who's like, what's a tube sock? <laughs> Including myself, like what is a tube They're sock? They're kind of like sport socks that go up past the ankle. They're like, they're longer uh, and they often yeah. have stripes at the top. They're kind of like, sure. you know, and they're just caught. They're pretty basic socks, but they're just thick. And I like, my whole thing is like pulling up my socks over my yoga pants uh, especially when I'm like hanging out at home and like having my slippers on. I don't know. It's just, it's it's maybe a style thing, but I like it. And my last mm-hmm. thing, well, I've got other stuff if you want me to, to go uh, into a, a little bit of a rabbit hole here, but white rice, you and your ramen, I have to have my white rice. There is something about, I think maybe it's my Japanese heritage, uh, but man, I like white rice. You have is, Japanese heritage? Yeah. My dad was born in Japan. And, uh, oh, but you're not Japanese. Got it. Got no, it, got but like my yeah. family, we have a lot of like roots. I mean, he was there the first five years of his life. My grandparents um, lived there, you know, when my dad was born. And so there's a lot of, we, we grew yes. up I understand what a you're lot saying of like Japanese food. So it's been sort of like, I guess, in my blood. Um, but yeah, there's something just so comforting about a nice hot bowl of white rice. So I, I usually have white and brown rice at the ready mm-hmm. 
Sometimes de- it just depends on what's going in it. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's a mood thing. Yeah, it is. Sometimes I'm like, brown rice is going to work with this. Yeah. And other times I'm like, no, it's white rice. Yeah, white that's, rice, that's, I love. That's what I want. I pretty much only do white rice now. And I, I put it in some miso and it's like such a simple meal. But sometimes I'll even have that for breakfast. Like it's kind of weird, oh, but yeah, so good. I think my next, uh, I need to investigate these sun lamps. Have you ever had a sun lamp? That's sort of for like seasonal affective disorder yeah. stuff. I have not. Uh, I had a roommate once who did mm-hmm. and she she had it like, I mean, according to her, it was kind of severe in the winter. Mm. Even though we lived in California, she was from the East Coast and she's like, I've always had this, this kind of issue mm-hmm. during certain winter months. And she would like sit there in the morning like, and just like absorb it. And she Whoa. swore that it helped a lot. So yeah, I've I have definitely seen one. it help for people, whether or not it's like a placebo effect, who knows, mm-hmm. but they seem cool. Yeah, I, I got to look into that. Well, um, if any of you you guys out there have any <laughs> life hacks you want to share, please email us at hi have such a good day.com because we want to hear from you early and often every day of the week if possible. So keep these so emails coming. And also, if you are so unfamiliar with what the hell we're doing here, you can find us on patreon.com slash have such a good day where we have Indeed. a variety of tiers, only a few right now. We're keeping it kind of rudimentary for right now but um but let us know if you have any questions about things down yeah we paired things down although we we'd love to ramp it up in the future we just for newbies on patreon we get a lot of questions like well what does this mean or how's this work Mm -hmm. and we we just kind of we kept it simple Mm -hmm. for a while when we decided to reboot the show after some months had gone by and we missed each other and we missed all of you. So for those who are patrons, thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, for anybody who, uh, for whatever reason, can't contribute to the show, I mean, it's as little as a dollar a month. I mean, you don't have to go crazy. But if for, for any reason you can't do that, we understand. We do offer an ad-free version of the show that goes out the day later. So patrons get the show a little early. You know, it's kind of a nice thing. Yeah. But uh, you've got options, and we appreciate your support. You're a great community. Yes, 100%. I couldn't have said it better. Speaking of great community, Jake A., we won't call him totally out, but he's been a longtime patron. He's great. He's a guy that I talk about uh, horror movies with constantly. It's been super fun. Um, He's very communicative, and he wrote in about our, our last episode, And he said, great episode. I feel for Sarah with all the random things that go wrong around the Airbnb. I myself have had my own calamity a week and a half ago. A tree crashed through my house and annihilated two bedrooms. Lucky no one was hurt. And I'm currently going back and forth with adjusters and contractors for rebuilding. 2020 man. Oh, Jake, that sucks. First of all, so glad no one was hurt. I mean, that is one of my fears. Because it's like if a tree falls and you're like comfortably in bed and it falls on you, you got, I mean, you had no choice. Mm-hmm. It was over from, <laughs> it's just over, yeah. right? Uh, you know, so uh, good news on that front. But I have heard from others who've had similar issues. A lot of people uh, with, yeah, insurance adjustment and uh, those dragging their feet. And you're like, my house is completely in shambles. Like, let's get a move on here. I can't even imagine. And all the people who lost their houses to fires. It's just crazy. You it know, he, he also wrote in about Fulci. This is the Lucio Fulci topic that I uh, talked about. I think it was last episode. It was the Italian gore uh, director. Mm-hmm. He said, on the Fulci topic, I really like zombie. Um, It's such a fun take on the genre, and it certainly doesn't take itself seriously. With the whole zombie versus shark scene, the eye splinter scene is truly horrific, and I also look away because it's just too much LOL. Fucci kind of made a sequel to Zombie with Zombie 3. He was very ill during the making of that and had to eventually drop out. Zombie 3 is comedy gold. If you're ever into looking it up, and he always uses uh, Have Such a Good Day um, as an acronym, so he says H-S-A-G-D exclamation point. So... We don't Thank actually you. use the A ourselves, but either but maybe works. we should. We know eh, just one more thing. I know. Some things would have to change if we did that. I don't know. 100%. It's a conversation for another day. Yeah. <laughs> zombie zombie with an I. Well yeah. or not or not with an E, rather. Uh-huh. Um at the end. Probably not something I'm gonna watch. No. Uh, I don't but think now you I know that there's a tr- <laughs> truly horrific scene that Jake couldn't watch. You, yeah, you, I would say you this wouldn't I, I wouldn't recommend this one. But I'm yeah. happy to recommend some mellower 
like the long weekend like i recommended last time the australian movie so you better get on that sarah i will once i finish the queen's gambit mm -hmm. that's my thing oh yeah i heard about right that. now cool yeah it's it's good it's 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 um i'm i'm not done yet so i don't know if i'm gonna like it you know as a sure as a little series but um i know a lot of people who can't stop talking about it i wish i liked chess more yeah i'm not i didn't i know how to play chess mm -hmm. but i'm not like into it yeah and there's so much it's you know this is not a spoiler there's just so much chess involved yeah in just the storyline i mean very heavily chess involved that mm -hmm. you're just like ah, another chess match <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I kind of like all the other stuff better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, well, I'm watching a new show on HBO with Nicole Kidman. I think it's called, gosh, oh, oh The Undoing. The Undoing. Yeah. yeah. I haven't started it. Uh, I've heard it's good. Yeah. It's I don't good. know. I haven't heard much about it. Uh, he's somebody mentioned it. He's an interesting to me. style. I yeah. think, you know, the big cool. little lies guy. But um, I love Nicole. I love Nikki Kidman. She's, uh, you know, she's yeah. so prolific. She's just so good at what she does. She's good at what she does uh, and quite the resume at this point. Oh, man. It's insane. You, you she's know? in everything. It's crazy. She is. Uh, just a good actress. I mean, she's yeah. been in some All of around. my favorite movies. Yep. Well, well thanks, <laughs> Jake, for writing in. And a reminder, hi at havesuchagoodday.com. There's where to send emails. If you've got feedback for anything we talk about, you've got questions, you've got ideas, all the good stuff, we will take it. And thanks for everybody who rates and reviews the show as well. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to give us an iTunes review, even if you don't feel like writing anything, and you just want to rate it like you don't have yeah, time. Totally. That's cool. You don't even have to use iTunes as, as mm -hmm. the way that you listen you to the podcast. Don't. It's just it's just like a cool way for us to get, you know, into, you know, a mainstream audience. Well, yeah, a little bit more visibility. And I sure. know every podcast like begs people to do this, so don't feel compelled. But if you feel like it, we'd love it. But if you guys ever want to know like about, you know, we could break down some of the pod catchers for you. I mean, I know I have my, uh, you know, the ones that I love and I know Sarah does too. So if you guys ever want us to kind of talk about what they each of them have to offer, if you can't decide on uh, where to listen, let us know. And until next time, I will remain Heather, not Sarah. <laughs> you almost said Sarah. You know, Heather, Heather and I, real quick before we go, we have been, people have always, especially oh, because we've worked together so much, mm -hmm. but even with friends, and because like we're around each other a lot, I've always been called Heather. Oh, yeah, it's like always been called Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah like, Sarah. It's, or, or they'll just be like, Heather, you know, and look me straight in the eye, and I'm like, I'm Sarah. I, I, I know you can see me. I'm Sarah. That happened oh, all the God, time. I did it again. <laughs> all the time. It's just it's just one of those things. And here we are doing a podcast. So we can't even keep it straight anymore. So you'll remain Heather and I'll remain Sarah. And yes. We'll be back and we'll do this again next week. We will. And we are going to have a grand old time. Yes, we are. So have such a good day and have such a good week. And yeah. pr pray for pray for Earth. And have such a good meal wherever you yeah. are. <laughs> Eat some good. Treat yeah. yourself. Treat yourself. All right. Love you guys. Uh, over and out. Bye.